You are welcome to my channel. I'll be talking about tranexamic acid. Tranexamic acid. Tranexamic acid could come under different brand names: cyclocapron, Listeda, F for tranexamic, GD tranexamic acid, Ma tranexamic acid. Belongs to the class of medications known as hemostatic agent or antifibrinolytic agent or anti hemophilic agent or lysine analog. Uses This medication is pretty useful in dental procedures with anticoagulants, in hemoptysis, in hereditary angioedema prophylaxis. In hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, nepistesis, intracranial hemorrhage with thrombolytic agent, in heavy menstrual bleeding, and perioperative prevention of blood loss. Also useful in cardiac surgery, blood transfusion, orthopedic surgery, spinal surgery. Postpartum hemorrhage prevention, postpartum hemorrhage treatment. Also useful in subarachnoid hemorrhage and here for prevention of aneurysma bleeding, in von Willebrand disease and tooth extraction, in hemophilia and tooth extraction, thrombocytopenia and tooth extraction. Also helpful in trauma associated with bleeding. Or traumatic brain injury, also in the field alveolar hemorrhage and traumatic ephema. Forms could appear in a form of solution for intravenous use as cyclocapron 1000 mg per 10 ml or 100 mg per 5 ml. Could also be solution for intravenous use as generic 1000 mg per 10 ml or 100 mg per 5 ml. Also generic 1000 mg per 100 ml and 0.7% sodium chloride. Also could be in form of tablet for oral usage, that is by oral usage. And in that case, I'm going to find the generic trinitamic acid as 650 mg or 500 mg. We can also find the state as 650 mg or cyclocapron 500 mg. Administration You can give trinitamic acid via inhalation through nebulizer. You can administer over 15 minutes through jet nebulizer. It can also be given through intravenous injection at the rate of 100 mg per minute. But please don't give this medication too fast. And why that? If you give it too fast, that can lead to severe hypotension and that might kill the patient. The paroral formulation can be given with or without food. But the individual should swallow the medication whole, don't break, don't chew, and don't crush. Still on administration could be given via continuous infusion and the loading dose may not be diluted. It could be diluted if you choose to and you infuse over 15 to 20 minutes. After dilution, Give the medication at a rate of 100 mg per minute, but don't push. Adverse reactions Abdominal pain, headache, musculoskeletal pain, sinusitis, anemia, muscle cramps, chromatopsia, cerebral thrombosis, deep vein thrombosis. Others are hypotension, retinal veil occlusion, retinal artery occlusion, pulmonary embolism, allergic reactions, nausea, vomiting, 
and diarrhea. Still on adverse reactions, ureteral obstruction, remember, ureter would drain from the kidney straight to the bladder, right? And from bladder out is ureteral. Have sensitivity, I will go into that in a bit. Renal cortical necrosis, actually we don't give this medication in maturia. Dizziness, scissors, and conjunctivitis. Contraindications. Don't give trinexamic acid if there's a sensitivity to trinexamic acid or any component of its formulation. In subarachnoid hemorrhage with the risk of infarction, no trinexamic acid, please. But you can use trinexamic acid if the subarachnoid hemorrhage is aneurysma in origin, and you can use that for 72 hours. Intravenous clotting that is active with the risk of infection will preclude its usage. And don't give this medication in immaturity. Still on contraindications, please. The prioral trinexamic acid is not given in thromboembolic diseases. I repeat, don't give trinexamic acid prioral in thromboembolic diseases. And someone is asking, what are those diseases? Pulmonary embolism, divent thrombosis, cerebral thrombosis, apoagoglopathy, thrombogenic valvular disease, or hormonal contraception use. Warnings. We need to let anyone on this medication know that there is likelihood of alter level of consciousness. So, he or she cannot embark on tasks that require alertness, like driving, flying plane, or as sailors on the sea. Watch out for absensitivity reactions that could be deadly, like Simon Johnson syndrome, toxic epidermal necrolysis, severe anaphylaxis. There might be visual loss, color vision loss, and venous and arterial retinal occlusion could occur. Neuroasia ingestion inadvertently will lead to seizures. Also, central retinal artery vein occlusion is possible. Still on warnings, be careful with disseminated intravascular globopathy. Adjust those in renal impairment and use this only in aneurysma subarachnoid hemorrhage, not in other forms of subarachnoid hemorrhage. Remember, it can form thrombosis in cardiovascular system or cerebrovascular disease if the underlying conditions are uncorrected. Drug drug interaction. It's my practice in my channel to refer you to the pharmacist or clinical pharmacologist because most of the time some of these medications will react with a lot of other medications and I will not be able to go over the entire list. I'll do the same here. Discuss the pharmacist, clinical pharmacologist, or neurologist as the case might be. But I will go over a few in a few minutes. Oestrogen and progestins, of course. Any woman on them should not take trinexamic acid. Antifibrinolytic agent is contraindicated here. Human protrombin complex concentrate, no. Tretinoin may enhance the thrombogenic effect of antifibrinolytic agents. Monitoring. Ophthalmologist. And why that? Because of the probability of central retinal artery vein occlusion. Remember, I've mentioned visual loss or color blindness. So, ophthalmologist will help here. Clotting profile. You know, for obvious reasons, right? Okay. Complete blood count if there's bleeding anywhere. Renal function test because in renal impairment, we have to adjust the dose. The same goes you know, as far as liver impairment is concerned. Now, mechanism of action. It reversibly displaces plasminogen from fibrin, thereby inhibiting fibrinolysis. That is the main reason why we use it, right? And we use it in another situation entirely, 
that is in hereditary angioedema. And what is the mechanism of action here? It decreases adversion of complement and also reduces the consumption of C1 S rate inhibitor. And what would that lead to? That would be leading to decreased inflammation associated with hereditary angioedema. Examples of where and when we can use trinazamine acid. Dental procedures. 5 cent solution for oral rinse for 5 to 10 minutes before the procedure. Patient can hold 5 to 10 minutes in mouth for 2 minutes, then drain gently. You can repeat that 3 to 4 times daily. Also, in hereditary angioedema, can give 1 to 1.5 gram twice or 3 times daily. You can decrease the dose to 500 mg once daily or twice daily if you are noticing improvement. The last example is in intracranial hemorrhage associated with thrombolytic agents. Here you can give intravenous neutralizamic acid at 1 gram or 10 to 15 mg per kilogram once at a very slow rate of 100 mg per minute. Or you can give you know, your calculated dose over 10 to 20 minutes. I would choose 20 minutes because I'm afraid I don't want to run into severe hypotension. Then you have to review whatever you are doing here with your CT and with the help of your neurologist. And with that, I've come to the end of this very presentation. Tridesamic acid is pretty useful but dangerous. So we have to know the dosage and we don't rush it. And we watch out for all parameters with which we can monitor this medication. Thanks for listening. Remember to share. Remember to subscribe so that I can get all my presentations immediately they're published. I appreciate it.